Hello All Saints, I'm here with you in one of my favorite places on our church campus, the Columbarium. And I'm here with you today because today is the Feast of the Ascension, the 40th day of the season of Easter, a time when the church remembers Christ's ascension into heaven. That wonderful story from the Gospel of his bidding farewell to his apostles and sending them out to do the work that he'd given them to do, promising them that he would send them a new advocate, a new comforter in the Holy Spirit. And of course, we'll be celebrating that in just a few more days when we arrive at the season of Easter. So on this day when we can't gather inside the church, I thought I'd come and join you virtually outside the church here amongst all these saints that have gone before us in this beautiful space in which is kept looking the way it looks by so many people who give their time and talent to keep the flowers in place and everything trimmed and looking beautiful. And of course, by our artist in residence, Mr. Fred Collins, who designed the beautiful columbarium cross that we have as well as these beautiful ascending doves and right next to all of that are windows that actually date back from the original All Saints Church that shut down in 1955 before this space began to be built so this seems like the appropriate place for a wonderful feast day for the church the ascension of our Lord and I wanted to share with you today one of the favorite readings I always go back to on this feast day of the Ascension, a reading that goes all the way back, believe it or not, to the 5th century, to a sermon that was given by Pope Leo the Great at that time, who would go on to become Saint Leo the Great. This is a sermon that he wrote and read on the Feast of the Ascension somewhere before the year of 461 AD. At Easter it was the Lord's resurrection that was the cause of our joy. Our present rejoicing is on account of his ascension into heaven. With all due solemnity, we are commemorating that day on which our poor human nature was carried up to Christ, above all the hosts of heaven, above all the ranks of angels, beyond the highest heavenly powers to the very throne of God the Father. It is upon this ordered structure of divine acts that we have been firmly established so that the grace of God may show itself still more marvelous when, in spite of the withdrawal from our sight of everything that is rightly felt to command our reverence, faith does not fail, hope is not shaken, charity does not grow cold. For such is the power of great minds, such the light of truly believing souls, that they put unhesitating faith in what is not seen with the bodily eye. They fix their desires on what is beyond sight. Such fidelity could never be born in our hearts, nor could anyone be justified by faith if our salvation lay only in what was visible. And so our Redeemer's visible presence has passed into the sacraments. Our faith is nobler and stronger because sight has been replaced by a doctrine whose authority is accepted by believing hearts, enlightened from on high. This faith was increased by the Lord's ascension and strengthened by the gift of the Spirit. It would remain unshaken by fetters and imprisonment, exile and hunger, fire and ravening beasts, and the most refined tortures ever devised by brutal persecutors. Throughout the world, women no less than men, girls as well as boys, have given their life's blood in the struggle for this faith. It is a faith that has driven out devils, healed the sick, and raised the dead. Even the blessed apostles, though they had been strengthened by so many miracles and instructed by so much teaching, took fright at the cruel suffering of the Lord's passion and could not accept his resurrection without hesitation. Yet they made such progress through his ascension that they now found joy in what had terrified them before. They were able to fix their minds on Christ's divinity as he sat at the right hand of the Father since what was presented to their bodily eyes no longer hindered them from turning all their attention to the realization that he had not left his father when he came down to earth, nor had he abandoned his disciples when he ascended into heaven. The truth is that the Son of Man was revealed as Son of God in a more perfect and transcendent way once he had entered into the Father's glory. He now began to be indescribably more present in the divinity to those from whom he was further removed in humanity. A more mature faith 
enabled their minds to stretch upward to the Son in his equality with the Father. It no longer needed contact with Christ's tangible body, in which, as a human being, he is inferior to the Father. For while his glorified body retained the same nature, the faith of those who believed in him was now summoned to the heights where, as the Father's equal, the only begotten Son is reached not by physical handling, but by spiritual discernment. A wonderful sermon given in the fifth century by St. Leo the Great. And now, brothers and sisters, I send to you a wonderful, happy Ascension Day message. And I invite you to pray with me the prayer that is given for this day. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things, mercifully give us faith to perceive that, according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth even to the end of the ages. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. And let us pray again. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into heaven, so we may also in heart and mind there ascend, and with him continually dwell, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.